The 60 plus kilometres of New South Wales State Archives include records about the seedier side of our past. These include police, trial and jail records from the colony's earliest days. Among these records is a journal kept as an official surveillance record by William Augustus Miles, who was superintendent, then commissioner of Sydney Police in New South Wales from July 1840 until July 1848. It provides a unique insight into the criminal underworld in Sydney during the 1840s. I am Commissioner William Augustus Miles, appointed in the year of our Lord 1840 as Superintendent of the Sydney Police. Since my arrival in this colony of New South Wales, I have come to the conclusion that much of the colony's crime is the result of the indiscriminate mixing of that class of people who were convicts with the free immigrants. In order to maintain that constant surveillance of the criminal class which is necessary for the good order of Sydney Town, I have taken great pains to inform myself of how these criminals form themselves into gangs, and I keep a book relative to their movements, the parties who are their companions, and such other information as I may obtain respecting them. Sister to Martin, the coach builder, a servant at Mayor Christie's, suspected of stealing, connected with Drew, convicted of forgery. Michael Sheridan, Harrington Street, a thief, drives a dray and drives a trade with what he pilfers. Hyams, alias Poppy My Heart, sentenced to seven years. I have long had my eye upon this rascal, had him taken up, but baffled me. Have him now, transported, August, 15 years. Eliza Lewis, Fanny Smith, in Bly Street next to Leon's, said to be visited by my inspector, though he writes of them this. These two are very quiet, and has no interview with any one but gentlemen. We have to caution the public and publicans against the impudent imposition and fraud which a person of the name of Bloomfield, now in Sydney, is endeavouring to practice upon them. This gentleman was sent out some years ago for his country's good and has till recently been employed as a special at Port Macquarie. Having arrived in Sydney, he attaches himself to a young female whom he puts off as his daughter and then sponges upon the public in every shape and form. We know of several publicans who have been taken in by this scamp during the last fortnight to a considerable amount. He is a tall, jolly-looking personage with a most unfailing stock of assurance, to which he trusts upon his first introduction of himself for making a favourable impression. He assumes the familiar style, and what he principally delights in is having everything round him in a homely way. We saw this fellow after being turned out of a house where he had run up a bill of seven pounds, step into a poor man's shop and having refreshed himself and his dear Ellen with ginger beer and cakes to the amount of some shillings, retire with a promise to call again tomorrow and pay received information from Sullivan that Lancelot Smith stole a mare at Merry Creek, apprehended him at Mrs. Brown's in Pitt Street. Sullivan said he was planning the robbery of the Catholic Cathedral and described where the valuables were kept. On seeing Father Murphy on the subject, I found the silver as stated. The idea originated with some man in Hyde Park barracks employed to help in cleaning the cathedral. Sullivan said, in the far mountains, he met Kangaroo Jack, living in the bush, that they kept company for three days, and he used to sleep, though very suspiciously, at the same fire with him. 
I asked him if he learned anything concerning the bush rangers from Kangaroo Jack. It never does for people in our way to ask questions of one another, he said, and if I had, he might have put me out of the way if I had appeared to know too much. Sullivan told me Lancelot Smith offered to take him into the plan for robbing the Catholic Cathedral. Sent to Port Phillip, John Johnston. This fellow knows where Daniel's property is concealed, for he coolly said to Burroughs without moving a muscle in his face, Were them clocks cuckoos? Sharp. The watchmaker gave me information of this man, suggests he had cases of watches, some with names and numbers erased, takes pledges of all sorts and no questions asked. Sent to jail, tried and sentenced for stealing a ring. The complete manuscript and transcription of the Registry of Flashmen by William Augustus Miles, together with many other records from the CDS side of our past, can be found at State Records website at www.records.nsw.gov.au.